Hi, it's uh, Stormy Wetter here again and uh, I want to talk about um, Holocon. So I was lucky enough this weekend to go to the Sheffield Something Wicked um, Holocon. Now I'd been to Sheffield Holocon before but I'd been about four years previously. Every year we tried to go to some sort of um, con or convention and I love it. I absolutely love it but this year I kind of pushed myself further than I've ever been so I think horror fans and sometimes sci-fi fans as well we tend to hold ourselves up in a little world of our own watching these films or playing these games that you know and we don't have much contact with the outside world so these conventions especially if somebody like me that suffers from social anxiety can be a little bit scary but it is so worth it so what did i do this year well, this year i was lucky enough to have my photograph taken with both dario Gento and corey felderman why are these people well i mean apart from the obvious dario Gento is a directing god his films are beautiful they are disturbing they are mind-bending they are thought-provoking in short they are awesome as well as the photos those q a sessions and unfortunately the diagenta one was not brilliant so the microphones were not working very well so we could hardly hear what diagenta was saying there was also a lot of language issues and uh, there was an interpreter there which meant that sometimes between the question being asked and the answer there was a long pause um, and also they had questions from the audience which was fine except again they had no what they were calling roving mic so people were shouting out the questions it was getting to a point where I didn't know what questions were being asked and I couldn't hear what the answers were to even guess what the questions were the room itself was boiling it was absolutely horrendous there was um, three lots of stands and one stand was nearly empty so obviously we headed straight towards that stand only to discover the direct heat that was on that it was just horrendous uh, which is why hardly anybody was sat there but even the opposite side right at the top it was still sweltering and very uncomfortable unfortunately because it got to the point where i felt like i was going to pass out I didn't really, couldn't really hear anything that was going on. I did kind of cut that Q&A short, which was a real, real disappointment because I would have liked to have actually, you know, found out a little bit more behind why Dario Gento does what he does. One of the few things we did pick up from the conversation was that he wasn't particularly happy with the Suspiria remake, which doesn't come as any great surprise. Now, I am an 80s child. My first introduction to vampires and one of the things that started my lifelong obsession with them was Lost Boys. It's that film that we all have that we could quote pretty much every line from. You have the soundtracks, you can sing every song as well. Lost Boys is my film. The film I'm not allowed to watch with anybody else because I will literally just sit there and say the whole film, which isn't great entertainment for anybody else, but brilliant for me. So. Meeting Coy Felderman was just a dream come true. I mean, as well as Lost Boys, like I said, being an 80s child, he's the Goonies. He's Stand By Me, one of my favourite Stephen King adaptations. You know, he's Gremlins, he's The Burbs, he's Friday the 13th. You know, there's so many classic films that he's been a part of. And so it was great to actually get to meet him. He was very nice, very polite. The Q&A was amazing. So whatever issues they had during the Dario Argento one, which had been earlier, they clearly sorted out because Corey Feldman you could hear clearly. And despite there being a lot more people in the room than there had been, it felt a lot cooler in the room. So obviously somebody in the meantime had sorted out the heating issue. Corey Feldman was charming, he was witty, and he was passionate about horror films. He was he knew how to play a crowd let's put it that way and it never felt self-centered you know when some people talk about themselves which ultimately these q and a's are 
they feel a little kind of like me, 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 me. He's very self-deprecating and he came across as somebody that's genuinely still looking to find his mojo, which for us, the fans, we're like, no, you've already found it, dude. You're, you're fine. But I can understand from an actor's point of view why that's something he always wanted to push. See, being the Lost Boys fan, I was happy that uh, he spoke about this, that he'd had some of the, um, he still has the stakes from the film and that, and, and playing one of the Frog Brothers is one of his favourite roles. He did say that he was upset that they're doing the TV series reboot, which I could kind of understand. But he also talked about how he had an adaptation he wanted to do, a version that would tie all the films together in, as he put it, like the Avengers movies. That I would love to see. A kind of family tie-in showing that all of these families coming together in maybe a prequel or a sequel move would be awesome and I hope that, that will eventually happen. One of the most interesting moments was him talking about a film that very few people in the audience had heard of. It's a film called The Birthday, which only two people at the whole audience seem to have heard of. Him talking passionately about that film makes me really, really, really want to see that. So I've been trying to seek that out, struggling a bit at the moment, which is part of what he said. It, it's clear that marketing is not great. Um, since this is a Spanish-made film, Spanish director, pretty much a uh, Spanish cast, filmed in Spain, quite fun of being the only non-Spanish person in the film. Um, so you think at least in Europe we'd be able to pick it up, but apparently very, very difficult. So I'm still going to look out for that. The second day was more a kind of relaxing day. So we went on the Sunday. The only thing we had planned to see was um, cut screenings, um, extended trailer for the new IT documentary. So cut screenings, they do various documentaries for various horror classics, oh, and I should just say, and classic films in general. Um, the one that I've seen is the Hellraiser one, uh, which is currently on Shudder, and they also do the Fright Night one, um, which is also on Shudder. I haven't got around to actually watching that one yet. Um, why I say films in general, they spoke about other films that they uh, look at doing documentaries about Robocop and the Police Academy being some of them. So they talked about the kind of the it, the original mini series it, the original story of Pennywise the clown, and the, the fact that they've been doing it for seven years, even before the kind of the remakes um, were talked about, which is a shame because. Obviously, with a lot of the interviews and stuff like that, there's no mention of the remakes, and it, it would be nice to know what a lot of the original cast think about the remakes. But nevertheless, this is definitely something, again, being an 80s child, I know the miniseries came out in 1990. I was very much a child at that point. And while Penny, I'm not one of the generations who found Pennywise terrifying, I've ne I'm not afraid of clowns, never have been. I definitely found film really, really enjoyable. So this documentary looks amazing. And it even has a lot of the original cast, including a thankfully recovering Tim Curry. Um, so they're looking to release that in 2019. So I'll definitely be keeping my eye out for that. Um, one of the big parts though of these horror cons were the stalls. Now, as I mentioned, I suffer from social anxiety, so I'm not very good at talking to people. All my life, I've been told that as a girl, I shouldn't be into horror. And I kind of carry that st stigma with me wherever I go. So when people actually ask me questions about horror, I'm always a little bit kind of like terrified that I'm like represented all girls in horror, which I'm not. But uh, I'm always a little conscious about that, so I tend to retreat into my shell. This year, I made some effort to actually talk to people. And these people, it's a great community. It feels like a family. There's nobody there judging you. There's nobody there going, oh, how can you be into this horror, but not that horror? Or, oh, you're only into the mainstream stuff or the franchise stuff or, or you know, why aren't you into the obscure stuff? Or, oh, God, you're into the obscure stuff. You're a snob, etc., etc., etc. 
it didn't seem to matter what age, what gender you were, what nationality you were, you know, race, colour, creed, anything like that, doesn't matter at these events. And I got to talk to some lovely people. Uh, it was great to kind of see people's passions, whether it was speaking to um, Arrow Video, who were um, telling me about shock treatment, which is one of the DVDs I picked up. Big Rocky Horror Picture Show fan, and never quite built up the courage to watch shock treatment. But knowing now, it's probably kind of very ahead of its time, and very relevant in the sense of how reality TV can corrupt. So that definitely feels very apt at the moment. We were discussing that, and I happened to mention that from another store, I'd bought Fang's Egyptian version of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, these are the extreme stuff that I tend to pick up with these sort of things. Um, but there's no judgment. There was kind of like, this is what you know I think, and like I kind of said, what I'd seen, and and it was you know great banter. What was lovely as well was I'd been involved in a project um, a little while ago called um, it's a serial killer book, predominantly art relating to serial killers, but. I did a poem for it and I happened to meet two of the other contributors at the horror con and um, one is NMB Artworks, I'm sure it's a terrible for me, my dyslexia, um, who I follow and have a lot of his artwork anyway. I have um, one of his t-shirts, I have several of his prints, he is a really talented chap so go look him out, he does a lot of horror stuff. Um, and I got to speak to him for about 10, 15 minutes, maybe even more. And it was just great just to have a, a, a bit of talk back and forward about, you know, what we do and what we're into and all this and that. And also, there's that really, really awkward moment where I was walking around and my partner went, Oh, look, they're selling your book. And I thought, obviously, as being an author in my own right, I thought, Somebody's selling my book about my permission. And then I realised it was this Pizza Eater serial killer book. So I went and spoke to them as well. They also did artwork for it and that was uh, Twisted Anomaly. And they were really, really nice as well. And we were talking about the, the process and what we liked in the book and our favourite bits and all this and that. And again, it, it felt really, really nice and really, really comfortable. I didn't at any point feel like that I was just being tolerated. Next year... Yeah, I'd definitely go again next year. What I'd like to be able to do though is definitely build up the confidence to actually get stuff signed by the celebrities. Um, so at the moment it's still just the photo shoots. I haven't actually gone up to somebody and gone, can you sign this for me please? Because that is just terrifying <laughs> for somebody like me. Um, but hopefully I will get my act together and, and, and get it sorted. Is Sheffield Horror Con perfect? No, no, it's not. Um, like many, many events that attract a lot of people, the Saturday is is bedlam. Um, and it's not so much there for, it's just people are just so inconsiderate that, that they just stop and start talking in the middle of hallways and you're like trying to get past and queues for stuff as well. So both, they had a canteen or cafe area and a bar both were nigh on impossible to get served at and the bar itself which was in the main hall felt like it was really in the wrong place obviously I, I'm not an organiser don't know what rooms they have don't know where else they could put it necessarily um, also the queuing for especially Corey Feldman's um, photo shoot because it was literally straight after his Q&A there were people leaving the Q&A but not going to the photos and there was obviously people leaving and going to the photos and it got quite confusing knowing if there was a queue forming for the photo ops where that started were people cutting in were people just trying to get past so that was a little bit um, complicated uh, I did hear though that um, and I was there, they, they did hang around with the photos. They were both a little bit of a production line. And that is, do you know what, that is fair enough. Last year, 
and said to London Comic Con and, and I got to meet Meatloaf which was which again was absolutely amazing and his photo shoot overrun by an hour because he insisted on spending a couple of minutes talking to everybody which is lovely for you in that moment but I can imagine for the organisers it must have been an absolute nightmare especially for something like London Comic Con which is a much tighter schedule to, to get things ticking over. Taking all that into consideration over the Sheffield Holocon, I, like I said, I definitely go again next year. I really, really love it. And yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say for the moment, except I bought lots and lots of stuff that I really, really don't need. Lots of posters, t-shirts, and the obligatory madness of DVDs um, from things like uh, Good Films such as, God, I've got so many I can't even remember, things like Gremlins, like Lost Boys, the kind of ones that you'd expect straight through to some really, really obscure things like Frankenhooker and uh, Sean Hudson's adaptation of Slugs, which as a Sean Hudson fan, who, uh, funny enough, I managed to meet at the very first Sheffield Horror Con that I went to all those years ago, uh, definitely looking forward to that. So anyway, that's enough packing on for me and uh, see you again soon.